Good morning and welcome to Behind the Screen. I am JM, your GM, and we are talking about games today. Behind the Screen is a show where I sit around and I, we talk uh, with the chat, uh, discuss topics about gaming, reviews, which we're going to be doing one later this week for my good friend uh, Bob Crum. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. And we just talk about game design, adventure design, monster design. What is it like to be a game designer and kind of share my thoughts on this. So we're finishing up a series, uh, the first part of a series this morning about looking at the different genres of fantasy and how we can replicate that experience at the table. So if you go back and listen to the first three parts of this series, you'll know that we're in epic fantasy. You'll get an overview of what that means. You'll get a look at what uh, mechanically that uh, reinforce this idea of epic fantasy. Today we're going to be talking about how it all fits together at the table. Good morning to uh, Padre. Uh, thank you to Rook. Always good to see you, Rook. Thank you for your generosity, as always, my friend. Uh, if you are not uh, aware, we're going to be going into our tour game tonight at 7.30 Central. There, the Storm Knights are in... I, I may I will be honest, they may be in over their heads, so it'll be interesting to see how all this shakes out tonight. So, epic fantasy. How do we replicate epic fantasy at the table? Well, as we discussed last week, there's some mechanics that really help getting us into the mindset of epic fantasy. There are some things that really reinforce the themes. But to replicate the the experience at the table, I think one of our first things that we want to definitely look at is Joseph Campbell's Her Hero's Journey. That provides a really great map for an epic fantasy campaign. Uh, humble Origins, Call to Action, Rejection of the Call, Forced Back into the Call, Meeting with the Wise Person who Gives uh, Insight, Going Out, Crossing Different thresh Thresholds, uh, Descending into the underworld, finally returning home and changed. So if you're looking, you can find a ton of great resources on the hero's journey by Googling. Audible has a great um, version of the uh, Hero of a Thousand Faces that you can listen to if uh, you enjoy listening to those uh, sort of things. But you can find a lot of references to the hero's journey out there. I may try and put some in the show notes. Uh, JD, remind me to... Uh, put those in the show notes for you. So I think the first thing that we really want to focus on is the fact that epic fantasy revolves around quests and saving the world. And so the goal there is going to be to replicate that experience is to keep the focus on the quest. Let the players go out and explore and do things. But again, the focus should be the quest. Once the ring gets to into Frodo's hands, every step of the way in an epic in Lord of the Rings is about the ring, stopping the ring, destroying the ring, stopping Sar Saruman from joining up with Sauron, preventing the destruction of Gondor, all to keep the ring pushed, uh, the, the quest pushed forward. In Memory, Sorrow, and Thor, without giving too much away. Well, it, the, this series is like 30 or 40 years old, so I, I don't feel like there's spoilers. You keep the, the quest for the three swords in front of the main characters, even though it's a false prophecy. The Belgariad were focused highly on the fact that we have to get Garion to his destiny, uh, destined meeting with Torok. So there is a great focus on that. And I think as GMs, we can do that as well. Like think of, uh, I mean, look at 5th edition. Essentially, every one of those, uh, the early adventures, uh, Tyranny of Dragons, Princes of the Apocalypse, um, Storm King's Thunder, the quest is the main through line. Now, yeah, it may spread out, it may give the players a lot of room to work, but again, the goal is the quest. Um, thank you, Padre. I will keep those in mind. I will make a note right here uh, to let Kit... And Delilah, no. Um, also, uh, Restar, let me know what that screenplay book is. Uh, I have a I have a, a comic book uh, writer's guide that I use, the DC, writing comics the DC way, I think. And that's been very helpful to me as well. 
<laughs> you got a a spoiler for the got yeah that for a spoiler of the Narnia Chronicles. I uh, one of my favorite web comics back in the day was Penny Arcade, and uh, they were talking about King Kong, and one of the guys is like, "Well, you know, you know, Kong Kong isn't the monster. Humanity's the real monster, and that shows that when they kill Kong at the end." And the other guy was like, "Hey, spoiler alert!" And the guy's like. This movie came out in the 30s. Do you do you know how the Passion of the Christ ends? Spoiler alert, you know, Jesus dies. Uh, yeah, there should be a statute of limitations uh, on these. And that's a statute, not a statue of limitations, in case uh, you are all uh, wondering. So, other things to keep in mind to replicate this experience for our players and our friends at the table, right? Epic Fantasy focuses in on, as we said, the quest the uh, black and white morality, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, Colville has got a great video about why it's okay to kill something and have something completely unredeemable in the game to go out and just let your players know there's no questions asked. This is this is the morality and or the alignment or or you know it's always okay to kill undead that sort of thing. In epic fantasy, I think this is really important because. One, as we talked about symbolically, it boils down the choices to black and white, to good and evil, to uh, law and chaos, right? But when we get to the morale, the tension, the tension is very rarely external in epic fantasy. Wrestling with good versus evil is not an external thing, right? Sauron and his orcs, evil. Upholding uh, Gondor, good. Uh, stopping the fall of Austin Ard, good. Allowing the Storm T King to roll back time, bad. Uh, Torok taking over the world, awful. Same with the Dark One in, in the Wheel of Time series. Hopefully, stopping that leads to something good. I do like the Statue of Limitations. I feel like that's a Xanth item, uh, Rook. I don't know if you've read Piers Anthony's Xanth series. Uh, they also had the... Uh, uh, the trophy that was in the shape of a feline behind, it was the uh, Cathis Trophy, uh, which is still just lodged in my brain and, and will not fall out for more useful information. However, the, mora the, the conflict, the moral conflict, is very rarely externalized, I said, but it does matter internally. Thomas Covenant wrestles with the fact is, is the land real or not? Rand wrestles with the fact of what, what is worth the price of stopping the Dark One? Uh, Boromir and Faramir struggle with, or don't struggle in the case of Faramir, with the temptation of the ring. Um, Kadrak in Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn is sort of this morally gray character with a lot going on inside of him. So... When you present moral choices to your group, that's that should be more internalized. And it's really hard to get players to wrestle with the internal morality of things in a, in a game. Uh, mainly because... <sighs> yeah, you've got, this, you've got this problem of... Sometimes your players just want to roll the dice and engage in the world. Which is great. That's not a problem. That's, that's a good thing. But... Moral, moral, internal moral, moral conflict is probably the easiest to sort of push to the side in, in an epic fantasy. As Restar said, the sacrifices and losses of the hero should be epic, and overcoming them is heroic. And I think of, uh, if you read the Dragonlance Chronicles, Zane is in the middle of reading the Dragonlance Chronicles, and uh, Sturm dies. Again, spoiler alert, I should have said that beforehand. Sturm dies because the situation... It all like his internal conflict of is this you know am I a knight can I do live with honor and this code that I'm sort of not allowed to be a part of but want to be you you can step into this he steps into this gap to save his friends because his 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 conflict is resolved he realizes it doesn't matter whether he is a true knight or not, as long as he lives by the virtues of the true knight. Um, 
Yes, personal quests. And that's that was my point. The best way to do this is instead of asking your players for a giant backstory or um, detailed family history, in an epic quest, ask them what their personal conflict is and tie that into the stories, into the, into the quests around them. I don't remember the character who has the misfortune, um, but I know exactly who you're talking about, where everyone else is unlucky and it just sort of helps him out. And then you had, uh, is it Blink? who has the most powerful talent in all of uh, Xanth, but he, uh, no one can know about it. Otherwise, his talent wouldn't be able to pr uh, protect him. So, man, I remember reading that first time through the Dragonlance Chronicles and like Sturm's death broke me there's some really good stories about how it's affected other people's lives that i really enjoy but speaking of personal quests and this is kind of the last thing i wanted to talk about bringing the experience home is we talked about how characters in our epic fantasy tend to be um i don't want to say pastiches but they tend to be archetypal they tend to be stark they tend to be uh the forefront of everything so the first thing that i think that's really great about the epic fantasy quest and storyline that is interesting is you can lean into the fact that your players are going from zero to hero and the epic quest is the focus it's a good way to start with new players because you can say listen i don't need a background we just need to know enough about your character and why they're on this quest to get started let the player fill it out as the game goes because again this is their the quest is the through line or um, yeah, is the through line. And the, the player stories kind of interweave and twine around it, making the story stronger. I like to put into epic fantasy games what I call archetypal set pieces. This is really easy in a D20 game. Give your players, once an arc, once an adventure, a place where their character is designed to shine. The paladin challenging a enemy to one-on-one -on -one combat the barbarian mowing down a ton of uh faceless hordes the wizard getting to cast a cool ritual or spell the fighter getting to show off their techniques this is the point where you can like look at the lord of the rings movies right like what like think about like legolas's big scenes with the bow uh gimli fighting you know creatures off with with the axe and gandalf showing up at just the right moments at the right times um yeah, I would argue that, yeah, Dragonlance is the essence of this kind of uh, storytelling. And Restar, I'll let you know on a secret that my, my good friend Calvin has picked up after years of gaming with me. It does not matter how dire the situation is. Calvin comes to me and he's like, here's what I want to have happen. And I'm willing for my character to die to make it happen. I will move heaven and earth to set up a situation where it comes down to a die roll for him and we'll see what happens because yes long shot power only works if your goals are selfless or if you're willing to sacrifice yourself for something greater uh, legend of the five rings interestingly has a really great mechanic for this even though it's based uh far more off of um japanese and other uh more uh Kind of eastern thought they have this great rule for spell casting which is like hey here's what the spells do but if your player's ever willing to sacrifice themselves their whole life Could you say to power a spell this is like give them give them enough rope to do what they wish i love that effect the fact that like it's the mark like it's codified in the martyr card in tor and one of the things I love about Torg is it takes some of the things that I would do as a GM and gives it in front of the player as a mechanical thing that they can call on. So yes, in my games, if you're willing to martyr yourself, let me tell you, I will give you a lot of mechanical and narrative leeway to get things done. So I think those are sort of the kind of the key things about epic fantasy and replicating this experience at the table for our players because again there's something there's something joyful and beautiful and familiar about being able to sit down and say hey this is what we're going to do 
you guys like this style of story, let's replicate it in play. Uh, some things to stay away from in epic fantasy. Try and make sure 90% plus of the story is focused on just the characters and the quest. A lot of side quests can actually hurt an epic fantasy narrative. Uh, mainly because players are cats, and if you put something shiny over here, they will spend multiple levels and time of your campaign investigating the blacksmith's backstory because you said that he gave them a bit of a, a steely gaze and they want to know what that is. Uh, I need to bring Calvin to Torg. I think I played Star Wars. Really? Um, Calvin did play a bunch of Star Wars back in the day. Um, Padre, if you know Calvin, that would be amazing. Uh, that just a small world and uh, Calvin's one of the reasons that I'm running Deadlands now. He got me into Deadlands. So, yeah, this is, it's, I mean, that was just a, a small world if that's, if that's the case. Uh, Calvin went to school at, uh, I think, Biola. So let me know if that, if that narrows it down any more for you, Padre. So keep side quests to a minimum. Uh, keep the villain in front of the players. Whether it's people are always talking about him, the minions are out and about, right? The Dark One is always at the forefront of people's mind. In I uh, Padre, we will have to talk after this. I would love to. I would love to chat about that. Uh, Calvin is a good and dear friend of mine. Um, right, the Dark One is always the focus. Uh, the Nazgul are the ever-present reminder of Sauron's influence. The Storm King and his hand are always at the forefront of of these characters. The Grolem priesthood of Torak always make sure the players know where the villain is and what is going on with their plans. They may have to uncover plans, but always let them know that like the villain looms larger in the setting than almost anything else. The object of the quest looms in front of them and they need to grow and uh, move, move forward from there. So that is my discussion of epic fantasy. We'll be back with our next thing, high fantasy. If you remember the iconic Patreon, jump over to uh, the behind the screen channel. I'll post my epic fantasy reading or my high fantasy reading list for um, the next arc. But we're going to take a, a one to two behind the screen break, uh, depending on kind of where this falls. Thursday, I'm going to review the Dark Souls role playing game. And I got to tell you, after all of the controversy about the Dark Souls role playing game, uh, which if you are not aware, there was a bunch of typos, there were rules that didn't make sense, there were uh, things that they just lifted whole cloth from the SRD and never changed. When it came out, they initially tried to downplay it, and then they just ate the cost, and they're shipping brand new books out to everybody. So, uh, Steamforge Games, good on you. That was, I mean, that was a, that was a, I know that was a costly, but that was a class act move, and I just got my PDF. I really enjoy them like i enjoy the rules in dark souls we're going to talk about that on thursday especially for my good friend bob who was the one who got me to buy the dark souls role-playing game uh, there's actually a lot of jackaliness in uh in the dark souls role-playing game which i was pleasantly surprised about and i'm reading through uh blackbirds right now which is the new zwei powered by zweihander um setting rule set that is that was put together by I, I don't know if he's still the creative director but one of the creative directors at riot games who did like league of legends and it was his home campaign it is beautiful and it is weird and it is bizarre and i'm falling in love both with the art and the writing style of this book and as soon as i get through it we'll do a review of that as well so I know this was a shorter behind the screen, but kind of got to the end of that. So again, look on the Patreon on the Discord server, which Bob, we will be updating the logo on later today. And we'll be discussing uh, what constitutes high fantasy uh, probably Tuesday of next week, and then kind of go through our same thing. What's high fantasy? What mechanics reinforce the basic uh, themes and uh, touchstones of high fantasy and then how to replicate that? For our players but we are definitely going to be back on thursday with 
the Dark Souls RPG review. And tonight, part three, JD will correct me if I'm wrong, part three of the Infernus Gamble as our Storm Knights, the Fat Five, attempt to uh, unseat Astila and see if they can't bring a little order or slightly more or less chaos to uh, the city of Istanbul. And we are uh, going to be, just so everybody knows, we got two uh, games of the Fat Five this month. And then we're going to have two games of the uh, the B Team will be returning at the end of this month. I'm very excited to welcome back the members of the B Team and see what trouble they can kick over and uh, get into. And then we'll probably be off for a week or two at the start of August because of Gen Con and then back into it. Next Monday, we will be back with more Deadlands. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing or following here on Twitch. Follow us on YouTube, uh, places where media is social. Uh, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. Love to interact with people. And it definitely uh, allows the algorithm to say, hey, this is good content. Other people should look at it, which uh, just helps us continue to keep the lights on here at the Iconic Production Studio and produce great content. Thank you to all of my uh followers here people who jump on and are in the chat to our our patrons i just want to say a big thank you uh, to you guys we're updating the website i'm going to try and get everybody's name listed on the website for our patronage so until i'm i well padre i'm with you there's there's definitely our uh there's a lot of triangles that are going to start following down into uh into chaos. So, uh, Grom, good to see you, my friend. Yes, uh, just here under the wire, but uh, always good to uh, chat with people and, and see them in chat. Uh, this will be up on YouTube here a little bit later, and we will be back with Torg tonight, 7.30 Central. Come see the FET5 as they well, they try to take out a Tharkoldian uh, Stila, and I am interested to see how that will go. So, until next time, please stay safe, stay healthy, stay gaming. I will be back on Thursday with talking about uh, the Dark Souls role-playing game, and then we will be getting into Epic Fantasy. So, or High Fantasy next week. So, until next time, everyone, have a great one.